In my recent video on North Vegas, we ended up exploring the Northern Vegas sewers to help out Crandon keep North Vegas free of thugs and bandits. But while exploring the Northern ruins, we found pipes that led to other sewer systems below Vegas. We didn't have time to explore them then, and so we'll explore them today. Oh. Now, I pay close attention while recording my videos to try and keep the viewer oriented. I'll mention which door we come in and out of, say which direction we're turning, so that the viewer doesn't get lost. But when it comes to exploring subterranean sewers, I fear that may not be enough. And so I've installed a mod to help us out today called JIP Minimap by Jazzy Sparris. It puts a minimap in the top right hand corner of our screen and it clearly marks out which direction the player is facing, where the nearby doors are, and has fog of war. So we know where we have explored and where we haven't. I hope that this makes exploring the sewers more fun. Let me know your thoughts about using this map when you finish the video. To get to the North Sewers, we lifted up a sewer grate inside the North Vegas ruins. From here, there are two pipes leading to other sewer systems. Both of them face south. We'll take the westernmost pipe, which leads to the central sewers. On the other side of the grate, we head south to kill some rats. <laughs> and ghouls! We arrive at a path that runs east and west. We'll start by going west. This immediately leads to a very large room supported by concrete pillars running south and north. We'll go north for now. Moving north, we pass some sort of valve we can't interact with. And here the path splits off to the west. Following west, we round a corner north up a slope to find another junction and a rat. <laughs> We could go west or continue north. Going west leads to a dead end. This pipe is blocked in with concrete rubble. So turning around, we can go through the doors to the north. This lets us into a flooded room, which ultimately leads to a vaulted room with a staircase. Climbing the staircase leads to another filled in pipe. There is a door to the east, but it is likewise filled in. So, we've hit a dead end. Looks like we'll have to retrace our steps. Going all the way back to that large room that ran north and south, we'll continue by going south. Here we can kill a few more rats. All paths out of this room are blocked in with rubble except the southernmost path. This path slopes up a hill where we find fiends. With the fiends dead, we have a few options. Turning around, we can go west up a slope. This just leads to another pipe, blocked in with rubble, so this is a dead end. Heading back, we see a path off to the east. There's some sort of tire barricade at the top. Looks like that goes down a ways. Or we can go into the southern room where we found the fiends. We'll go there first, after looting the fiend bodies. We arrive in a square room with dirty mattresses covering the ground and scraps of cardboard for makeshift bedding. Moving out a door to the south, we find another fiend. This guy was standing at the bottom of another large vaulted room. And like the last one, we find a staircase leading up. At the top of this one, we also find a pipe filled in with rubble. But this door is not blocked in. Instead, it's locked. Door to sealed sewers requires a key. We can't pick this. We have to find the key. Looks like we need to turn the rest of the central sewers upside down to find this sucker. Retracing our steps, we can pass the piles of fiend bodies, and this time turn right past the pile of tires to head down a tunnel to the east. This connects to a large room with two pillars, which connects to another tunnel going east. Here we find a sandbag barricade next to a door in the wall to the south. Opening this door, we find NCR. 
the new California Republic has a fortified position here. Behind the sandbag barricade are two explosive crates, but they're marked as own. We can't loot these without stealing. And we learn why the NCR are here as soon as we climb the ladder. This puts us out directly in front of Camp McCarran. We have walked a long way. Didn't seem like that long underground. I covered all the intrigue going on at Camp McCarran in a series of videos that you can watch here. And off to the southwest, we see the El Rey Motel, which I also covered in a recent video. I'll link to all the videos I mentioned in this one in the description below. Well, now that we know where this goes, we can head back into the sewer and continue following that tunnel to the east, but it immediately turns north and goes downhill. This brings us to a flooded room where we have to kill more rats. <laughs> And as soon as we do, ghouls come out of hiding. Immediately to the right, we see a large double door, which leads to the East Central Sewers, an entire other sewer system. We'll come back to explore this. I want to explore the Central Sewers first. Oh, what'd you find there, Cass? <laughs> oh, looks like he got stuck. So continuing north, we can loot the ghoul corpses, and on the glowing one, we find the East Central Sewer Key. But the East Central Sewer Door we just saw was not locked. What is this key for? To the east, we find another door. This leads to a T-shaped room, which is a dead end. But to the north, we find a radiation suitcase on the ground locked with an average lock. And sure enough, inside we find an advanced radiation suit, which would have come in very handy, but now I've got Ulysses' mask. Lying on the ground next to this is the Multiplaz rifle. The Multiplaz rifle is similar to a plasma rifle, but it has three plasma barrels, which each fire a shot, which means this sucker shoots three plasma rounds with each shot. But as a consequence, it does consume three rounds of ammunition with each shot. But since it fires three projectiles with each shot, each one has a chance to score a critical hit outside of VATS, which gives this gun the potential to deal a ton of damage. One major downside is that the plasma balls travel really slowly, which is not a big deal if you're using VATS, but if you're trying to benefit from the criticals outside of VATS, that makes this a really cumbersome weapon to use. The Multiplaz rifle isn't unique, but it's pretty rare. There are only a few shops where we can buy it, and only a handful of them are placed as world objects in the game. Due to the three barrels, the Multiplaz rifle is the most powerful plasma rifle in the entire game. If all three bolts hit, it has a whopping 105 damage. But because it fires so slowly, it also only has a 105 DPS, which is only 9 greater than the Q35 Matter Modulator, which we discovered inside the Repcon headquarters. Next to this, we find a skeleton below a central sewer control terminal. It's locked with easy encryption. After hacking it, we read House Industries Network. And we find one option, central sewer control. But when we click on it, we see Access Override, House Directive 449B. This terminal has no function. It's part of a cut quest. It serves the same function as the terminal we found inside the New Vegas Steel Building. During the quest, the moon comes over the tower, which we covered in my series on the NCR ending to the game. That quest was originally intended to be much more elaborate, sending you all over the Mojave to access these terminals, which would allow you to override House's computers. But that quest was reworked at the last minute, and yet these terminals remain, but sadly serving no function. Heading out, we have quite a few choices. We see that the tunnels slope up to the west, continue up to the north, and we find another door to the east. Checking out this door first, we see that it's another door to the east central sewers. All right, we'll come back here later. Well, let's head west for now. Part of me thinks that this may complete a loop. At the top of this slope, we arrive in another large room with four pillars. There looks like an outlet to the south. As we head that way, we find the body of a prospector. And she was carrying quite a load. On her corpse, we find caps, ammunition, water, whiskey, all sorts of stuff. That's right, I've got Rose of Sharon Cassidy with me. Might as well chug a whiskey. Ah, now there goes the pain. That's the ticket. 
The path south is blocked in with more rubble, so turning around, we see this room connects to another room we explore to the west. And sure enough, continuing north, we find the exit to the northern sewers, where we came in. So turning around and moving northeast, we can head back towards those doors to the eastern sewer. We pass a door to the north, opening it. We see this must have been a ladder to a sewer grate at one time, but rubble from above has caved in. And lying dead on the ground is Blind Luke. On his corpse, we don't find much, but we do find Luke's find. The icon of this item says that it's a key. Could Luke's find be a key to the sealed sewers we found earlier? We'll take it just in case. Poor old blind Luke. I wonder if he was really blind or if that was just a nickname. Well, this leaves only two paths left to explore. To go through the doors to the eastern sewers, or to take the final tube to the east all the way north. We'll do that first. Heading north up the tube, we can kill rats at the top. At the end of this tube, we find a door to the west with a ghoul. Time for your... The ghoul was standing over the corpse of a dead prospector. Like the last one, this prospector was carrying quite a load of goods. And for caravan players, this is a welcome find. On his body, we find the Four of Diamonds and the Seven of Clubs from the Topps Casino. And on the ground next to his hand, we find another key. This key is called the Central Sewer Key. This key opens up the advanced radiation suit locker that we found in the other room. Since we already unlocked it, we have no further use for this key. Next to his body is a duffel bag, and inside we find quite a store of goods. Backing out of this room, we can finish exploring this tunnel all the way to the north, which brings us out a sewer grate back into the north sewers. We discovered this entrance in my video on the north sewers. So since we've been here before, we'll head back into the central sewers. And now that we've fully explored the central sewers, we can head south down this tunnel and take either of the two doors we discovered to the east central sewers sewers. On the other side, we round a corner to enter a huge pillared room with more rats. After killing the rats, we can sidestep huge piles of rubble in the middle of this room. There's a divider splitting the room into two halves. Going down the northern half, we find a door in the wall to the north. This leads to a bit of a utility room. Turning west, we find a locked gun cabinet, but we can open it with the east central sewer key we found on the feral ghoul's body. Inside, we find quite a lot of ammunition and a silenced 22 SMG. On the northern side of this room, we find a red toolbox and an ammo crate. And when done, we can head back out into the main pipe. Rounding a corner, we can kill a rat and ghoul we missed. And then... I'm gonna six this bitch. We find another path splitting north from the main pipe. We'll head this way first and kill a rat along the way. And then the fight starts. Heading up the tube, we find two doors directly across from each other. We can open the western one and chug some whiskey to make Cass happy. Pass the bottle. We find a water valve in the middle of this room, but otherwise it's empty, though it does lead out through a doorway to the west into another large vaulted room. We find ourselves at the bottom, so climbing the staircase, we see that the doorway is blocked up, but that the sewer pipe this time is open. Following the pipe to see where this goes, we find a grate that brings us out to the north sewers. But since we explored this in my last video, we'll turn around and go all the way back down that pipe, back to the tunnel. This time we'll explore the opposite door. Here we find a ladder that puts us topside in the middle of the road right outside the NCR Sharecropper Farms. We see a bridge to the north, the Lucky 38 towering above us to the west, and the tram going from Camp McCarran all the way to Vegas. Now that we know where this leads, we can head back down, step back out into the sewer, and take it all the way to the north. Here we find a grate leading out to the Mojave Wasteland. We appear to be close to Freeside. We see Freeside next to the Lucky 38, and nothing but ruins all around. But we are not done yet. Heading back into the sewers, we can take the tube all the way back to the large tube going east and west. 
We see a path leading out of this large tube to the south. We can loot the feral ghoul we killed earlier, and at the end of the tunnel, we find a ladder topside. This puts us out next to the Aerotech Office Park. It's here where Alice Hostetler fled, in my video on the Hostetler women, and it's here where we find Frank Weathers, after rescuing his family from the Legion slavers at Cottonwood Cove. We again see the tram, spanning Camp McCarran all the way to New Vegas. Now that we know where this leads, we can head back down, travel back up the sewer, and continue to follow the main sewer path to the east. This leads us downhill again. Pillars split the path into two. This time we'll take the southern path. Here we find a door to the south. Opening the door, we find a rectangular room, and on one end we find the corpse of Sweet Jill. Blind Luke? Sweet Jill? If this is the reference to an old country song that I just don't get, let me know. On her corpse, we find another copy of Luke's Find. These keys have got to open the door to the sealed sewer. We don't need to collect both of them, we just have to collect one. At the southern end of this room, we see a pile of skeletons. Get <laughs> and we get attacked by unnaturally large-sized rodents. This must be a reference to the Princess Bride and its rodents of unusual size. Though interestingly, finding rodents of unusual size is a wild wasteland trait event. I guess this makes two references to the Princess Bride. Next to these skeletons is one duffel bag with a ton of great gear inside, and it looks like we could squeeze through there, but we sadly can't. This fallen roof tile is blocking our path. So this is a dead end. Retracing our steps back to the main pipeline, we find two options. We can continue east, and we can take either tube. If we take the southern tube, we just kill a giant rat, we find this blocked off. So instead we can turn around and take the northern tube. Here we find a grate that leads back out to the Mojave Wasteland. It puts us out underneath the ruined overpass. We see the pipe that the NCR built from Lake Mead to New Vegas, piping all that fresh water for NCR citizens and for the NCR sharecroppers. And I don't think I've ever been here before. The only locations close to this one are the East Pump Station, Durable Dun Sacked Caravan, and Vault 34. But we are not done with the sewers, so heading back to the East Sewer Grate, we can check our local map and it looks like we've completely explored this sewer. That leaves only the sealed sewers left to explore. So heading back to the central sewers, we can take the other door this time and then follow the pipe south. Remember, this winds past the NCR checkpoint, goes up the hill past that big stack of tires where we killed all those fiends, but strangely enough, their bodies are all gone. Wow, those decayed fast. We can then head to that big vaulted room and climb the steps to find the door to the sealed sewers. And sure enough, Luke's find opens it. On the other side of the door, we climb up a staircase, enter a generator room to find... What a time to lose my whiskey. And where were my companions? Hey guys, fight's over here. Stop picking your nose. Ah, doggone companions. The corpses don't reveal anything, but this room opens up to a room to the east. Here we find some shelves and generators and other mechanical equipment. There is a door to the southwest, but it's blocked in with rubble. And we see a shelf to the west, but it's empty. Is that it? Did we come all this way for nothing? Oh. Oh wait, what's this? We find a corpse lying on the other side of a console. This is the corpse of yet another dead prospector, and on his body we find ammunition, a rattan cowboy hat, and the humble cudgel. Looting this weapon completes the unmarked quest, cajoling a cudgel, and gives us a completely unique melee weapon. The humble cudgel is a unique version of the lead pipe. 
It's slightly bent compared to the lead pipe and has some sort of T-fitting on the end of it, but it's much more powerful. It deals 26 damage per attack compared to 22 from a lead pipe, and it's a bit faster, dealing 2.77 attacks per second compared to a lead pipe's 2.54. That brings its DPS up to 72 compared to a lead pipe's 55.8. It also costs fewer action points, 21 compared to the lead pipe's 24, making it an ideal weapon for vats. It's also more durable, with about 50% more HP than a lead pipe, but it's a bit shorter. Our reach is not quite as long as with a lead pipe. It does a special attack called Lights Out, which deals 125% more damage in vats at the cost of 9 more action points. But we have to have a melee skill of 50 or greater to properly execute Lights Out in vats. However, we can execute Lights Out outside of vats simply by holding the attack button while moving forward. Next to the Dead Prospector, we find a duffel bag filled with a ton of ammunition and even an entire suit of reinforced combat that armor. Gosh, remind me to clear the sewers on another character early in that character's gameplay. We can walk away with some excellent mid-tier weapons and armor. And near to this is an ammunition box, and on the ground next to it is a humble fire axe. The fire axe isn't exactly rare, so we won't go over its stats, but strangely enough, it's more powerful than the humble cudgel, with a DPS of 86 compared to the humble cudgel's 72. At any rate, with that, we completely explore the entire sewer system found in Fallout New Vegas, and we walk away with some decent low to mid-level gear. What are your thoughts on either the Multiplaz Rifle or the Humble Cudgel? Did you use either in your gameplay as your go-to weapon? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I'm becoming more active on Twitter. I use Twitter to respond to viewers and to make announcements like when I'm about to do a live stream. So if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. I have a brand new shirt in the shop. The Burned Man Walks. That's right, it's everyone's favorite burned and bandaged blue-eyed ex-legion pistol whipping Mormon. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find the design on other stuff as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. Fallout 76 is coming. The beta for the PC will be out in just a few days. And never fear, when it drops, I'll be live streaming my gameplay at every available opportunity. And I'll be broadcasting right here on YouTube. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week with more brand new videos.